For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Where Jesus Welcome to Crossbound Ministries where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word. You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Embrace the love requires cling to the one amen thank you for tuning in today as we're going through the gospel of john john chapter 12 and verse 32 is where we're going to start today if you'd like to open your bible there and here this is jesus foretells of his death jesus knew why he came he came to die on that cross he came to seek and to save that which was lost amen he didn't come for the high and lifted up in the mighty no sir no ma'am jesus came for the lowly center john chapter 12 and verse 32 the bible says and i if i be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me hey, this part of the verse refers to christ's death on the cross he was nailed to a cross of wood and lifted up from the earth and that's what he's talking about lifted up literally his body being lifted off the earth and he is nailed to an old rugged cross to pay for my sorry rotten sins and to pay for yours that you might spend eternity in heaven amen and not have to go and see the fires of hell that's why he came he said and if i be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me and i believe that has a twofold meaning we'll talk about that here in a second the lord said that if he was crucified he would draw all people to himself for that deed, for that action, listen, when somebody loves you so much that they will lay down their life for you, if somebody loves you so much they jump in front of a bullet for you, that would grab your attention, wouldn't it? You would go, wow, they really love me, and that's exactly what Jesus did on that cross. But the difference is you have to accept him and his work by faith by repenting of your sins and putting your faith and trust in the lord jesus christ himself it is a personal relationship it's not just knowing about god or i believe in god listen to me the devils and demons believe and they tremble the bible says so just believing there is god is a god is not enough you must have a personal relationship with them and in this verse he said if i be lifted up off the earth will draw all men unto me and he talks about this and this is his glory moment when i be lifted up in glory what a way to talk about your own death isn't that not right what in the world is jesus talking about glory dying on the cross you listen when a soldier a soldier that's been trained he longs to fight he longs for battle he wants to win why because when he wins that is his glory and he can stand in victory that hey i won the battle i'm standing in glory and you listen to me that's what christ did when he died on that cross when he was in the grave for three days and three nights but he arose from the grave you see he's standing in glory amen he's standing in victory and he wants you to join him the apostle paul even said old oh, death where is thy sting the lord jesus took the sting out of death when you put your faith and trust in him why because you know that's not the end that's not the end for a christian it's just the beginning the bible even says that it's for a christian to die it is gain and 
And so he says, when I be lifted up and he's in his glory, that's his glory moment. Why? Because he is winning the battle. He is winning the battle against sin. He is winning the battle against the devil. Amen. He's going to beat it. He's going to defeat it. And he did. And now he is standing in glory. Amen. And with his hand out waiting for you to accept him. Will you accept him today? Amen. And so that's the primary meaning of this verse was his actual and literal death on the cross when he was nailed to it and lifted up. But I also believe that there is a secondary meaning to this verse. See, when Christ, Christ is lifted up in preaching of the gospel, when Christ is lifted up in your lifestyle, when Christ is lifted up the way that you work on your job, then there will be great power in that message. And souls will be won and will be drawn to him, amen, by the preaching of the cross, by the living it out in your life. You see, what is so powerful, there is no such thing as lifestyle evangelism, but your message your life better live out your message amen if you want to have power and be an effective witness for the lord jesus christ your life has got to show it amen most certainly if you want people to take you serious you need to live it and tell it amen be a witness and lift up the lord jesus christ why that you might draw men unto him that you might see souls saved that you might earn eternal riches in glory so that what we can cast those crowns that we earn at jesus's feet because we are not worthy it's all about him it's all about him it's all about him it's nothing to do with with me you listen to me if you want to be an effective christian you have got to empty yourself of yourself and be filled up with the lord jesus christ amen and then you can go out and preach and teach and witness and draw men unto jesus and that's what he wants that what is what is pleasing to him if you remember last week's message we talked about a kernel of wheat falling into the ground and dying that's one's dying to self you must got to die to self to pick up the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, the biggest thing the devil's going to use against you, even a good Christian, a good witness, is pride. Pride. Pride is a killer of the ministry. There's two things that I've realized that pride and bitterness are killers to ministry, killers to marriages, killers to relationships. Amen. But if you want to be right with the Lord. You have got to die to self and get rid of those things. Get them out of your life. Why? That you may lift up the name of Jesus and draw all men unto him and women and boys and girls, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Next verse, John chapter 12 and verse 33. Then he said, signifying what death he should die. He was talking about him actual and literal dying. That's what he's talking about. When the Lord Jesus spoke of him being lifted up, he signified the kind of death that he would die. That is by crucifixion. Jesus knew in advance that he would not die in a bed or die by accident, but that he would be nailed to a cross. He knew what was coming. And you listen to me, that cross back then, the day of the Romans, that was a torture device. It was a device that was meant to instill fear into those victims when they saw it. Oh no, not that, not the cross. I don't want to go to that. How in the world did it go from that to being a symbol of hope that is now on top of churches? People wear it around their neck. They have bumper stickers and nails and, and, and hat pins and all kinds of things when the cross and the cross is now a symbol of hope, of life. Why? It's because of what Jesus did on that cross that he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Could you imagine wearing a lethal injection needle around your neck? that they use to murder people that's what the cross is amen or an electric chair dragging that around that's a device used to kill people that does not a symbol of hope but yet that's what the cross was the cross was a device meant to instill fear into people because it was a horrific 
death. And Jesus took that and turned it into something miraculous that he may give you and give me eternal life, that we may be with him forever in glory. Amen. Only Jesus could do something like that. You see, Jesus is God in the flesh. He is our intercessor between us and God. The only way to heaven, the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. There is no other way. Amen. And the only way he did that was through the cross. Verse 34, the people answered him, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou? The son of man must be lifted up. Who is the son of man? They asked him. Hey, the people were puzzled by this statement. If you remember, even the disciples a lot of times didn't exactly know what Jesus was doing and, and they got confused sometimes. And so these people here ask him, who, who is the son of man. They knew that he had claimed to be the Messiah. And yet they knew from the Old Testament, the Messiah would live forever. You got to remember, they knew the Old Testament. And notice that the people quoted Jesus as saying, the son of man must be lifted up. Amen. The son of man, as sometimes Jesus referred to himself. Jesus is many things. He is God. He is the savior. He is the light of the world and he has given you his bible his word the bible said is a it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path it shows me where i'm at it's a light unto my feet and it shows me the way that i need to go it is a light unto my path amen you make sure that you read it you study it you heed it and you and apply it to your life moving on next verse john chapter 12 and verse 35 then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. When the people asked Jesus, Who is the Son of Man? He spoke of himself again. He told them, I'm the light of the world. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Amen. He is. And one day we won't even need the sun itself because Jesus, the light from Jesus is going to light the world perfectly. That's how much Jesus is the light. And he reminded them that that light would only be with them for a short while at this time. And can I just tell you, your life is so short on this earth. You have but a short time to work for Jesus. You have but a short time to effect eternity for the Lord. The Bible says that your life is but a vapor, just like a breath on a cold day. You see it and then it disappears. It's like that and it's gone. And I have challenge you, go find the oldest person that you can find and ask them how long their life was. Do you know that I have not had one tell me, boy, it sure took me a long time to get here. No, but every one of them has says, I cannot believe my life went by that fast. It just turned around and I'm an older person now or I'm a grandpa or I'm at the end of my life. Life went by so fast. Let me just tell you, every day is precious. Don't pass up an opportunity because every day we pass spiritual opportunities and you may not ever, ever, ever get that opportunity again. Please make sure you take it. Work for the Lord. And so as Jesus is telling them about the light, they should come to the light. And we should walk in the light. Otherwise, darkness would soon overtake them and they would stumble around in ignorance. The Lord seemed to liken himself to the sun, amen, and daylight. And it, just like the daylight, it, it offers us a certain amount of time and it, and it goes down, amen. Listen, Jesus is going to come to you many times in your life and say, you need a Savior. You need to be saved. But the more that you reject Jesus, the more that you harden your heart, the harder it will be for you to get saved. And one day, the, the Bible even says, one day that you reject him so much that he won't come to you anymore. Don't put off 
salvation. If the Lord Jesus knocks on your heart and draws you and woos you and shows you that you need to be saved, will you just let it go? Will you let go of those sins and say, Lord, forgive me? Come into my heart and save me. Amen. There is nothing, nothing, nothing better than that. I thought I knew what fun was i thought i knew what going out and having a good time was going out and acting crazy and stupid but listen to me none of that none of that compares to having the lord jesus christ i look back and go man how foolish was i i've never felt so free now that i have jesus amen and i just let him take the wheel let him have control why because he is the way the truth and the life no man come to the Father but by him, but by Jesus, amen, and life, that's when real life begins, when you have that spiritual life, that spiritual birth, amen, man, then you're living for Jesus, you're living for the Lord, the wrath of God no longer abides upon you, you and God are right, one with another, and you are free to serve him, amen for that, so we should avail ourselves off while it is here, because the night comes. And we, we won't be able to work. Even for a Christian, the end of your life will come. And you won't be able to work no more. Make sure that you take advantage of every chance that you get to spread the gospel. And so spiritually, the one who believes in the Lord Jesus is the one who walks in the light. The person stumbling around in the dark with all the worldly wisdom that we have, all the PhDs and doctrine degrees and all these things. The Bible talks about that forever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? The truth is just what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way that you can look out into this world and say there wasn't a creator. That is just like looking at a building and going, there was no builders, there was no carpenters, there was no roofers, there was no window guys there was no carpet men there was no plumbers that would be crazy right how could you look at this world and all the glory of the trees and the birds and the sea and the human body and the complexity of it and go there it just happened by chance there's no way you have to lie to yourself majorly to believe that amen if you would just look around and look at the great and wonderful things that god has created and you know what the most amazing one of them is all? Is you. Is you. There is nothing else that Jesus wants a relationship with. He doesn't want a relationship with the whales or the bears or the bees. He wants a relationship with you. He came and died for you to save your soul. Amen. You're the one that he loves. You're the one that he died for. But if you're walking around in darkness and you rejected him and you think, well, I have it all together. My life's great. Man, I got a beautiful wife or a good looking husband. I got a good job, a nice home, plenty of money in the bank, a good retirement. I got great health insurance. But listen, if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, none of those things mean anything. The Bible says what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. If you were the richest man on the planet and you became the first trillionaire, yet your life is still going to end. With all that money, you can't make your own heart beat one single time. That's in God's hands. Accept his son today, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may have eternal life, that you may be right with God, that his wrath may not abide upon you any more. Why? Because you have accepted what his son did on that cross verse number 36 while ye have light believe in the light that ye may be the children of light these things spake jesus and departed and did hide himself from them hey again the lord jesus warned his listeners to believe on him while there was still an opportunity while you still have time and by doing so they would become Sons of light, they would become the light of the world, the salt of the world. They would be assured of direction through life and into eternity. You, you see, because before you're saved, you're just stumbling around in the dark, doing the best that you absolutely can. But oh boy, once you get saved and the light of God moves within you, you have a purpose for your life. And it's not to be a millionaire or have a big house or make a big name for yourself. No, it's to work for the Lord before we step out into eternity. And I tell you what, I want every one of my family members 
to be there. If you're under the sound of my voice and you're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. And the Bible says in one place where they wouldn't believe even if a dead man rose up out of the grave and told them. There's a place called hell. You better get saved. They wouldn't even believe that. No matter how much proof that you could give them, they would not believe. Why? Because the truth is they love their sin. The Bible says that men love darkness. You ever wonder why men love skulls and fires and flames and their own everything and they think it's so cool? The Bible says that men love darkness. Amen. And so the Bible says no matter how much proof you can show, some people, they won't believe. But if you're a Christian, your job is not to prove it. Your job is to tell it. Amen. You couldn't make one person believe if you wanted to. It's the Holy Spirit that woos them and draws them. Your mission and your goal is to preach it and tell it and witness it. You say, well, I can't preach. I can't tell nobody. Well, you can pass out a track. You can tell them what Jesus did for you. You can tell them how God changed your life, how God changed your heart. Amen. Listen to me. They'll listen that quicker than what you tell them Jesus can do for them. Why? Because that's your personal story. It's what God has done for you in your life. Amen. And just by you telling them that, they know that God, God can do it for them too. Verse 38, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. What you spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. And they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. And they were speaking about what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 10. Isaiah the prophet prophesies about that. And that Jesus is talking about being converted and should heal their heart. Healing of what? The sin sickness? The sin sickness that we all have that is brought into the world by Adam and passed down by him and death passed upon all men. That's what Jesus came to heal. Verse 41, these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but also of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They were scared to say because they might get thrown out of the thrown out of the church, thrown out of the synagogue. They would lose their welfare, their, their job, and they would be excommunicated. And they, they were very much afraid of that. And verse 43 tells you why. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And there are many people just like that today. They want all the praise of men. They're not worried about God. But the praise of men is like the grass that withereth, the flower that fadeth. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. But listen, when you have the praise of God, when you have the honor of God on your life because of the way that you are, are living, because that you have accepted his son, that you have repented of his sins, hey, that will last for all eternity. But the praise of men is like the wind. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow and it means nothing when it comes to eternity. I don't care if you've won the Nobel Prize or the, or the biggest honorable most thing on the planet. Hey, I'm not taking away from it but it means nothing when it comes to eternity. So it was obvious that these men were more interested in the praise of their fellow men than they were pleasing God. How about you, Christian? Are you worried about what everybody at church thinks of you? Are you worried about what your family thinks of you? Or are you working to please the Lord God Almighty? Because they, they thought more of man's approval than they did of God's. So can a person like that be a genuine believer? Absolutely. They may not be right with God, but they're truly a Christian. So I asked you today, what are you seeking? Are you seeking the honor of men? Or are you seeking the favor of God? Are you seeking to please the Lord? Or are you seeking to please men? Repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352 352- 247-9200. That's 352-247-9200.
Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.